Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today we're asking if viruses can live in space. Isn't conquering Earth enough for viruses? Like, do they have to live in space, too? Scientists want to look for viruses that were made in space because they might be a sign of life on other planets. So get ready to hunt for alien viruses. Today's question comes from Julian. I am Julian. I am eight years old. My question is, can a virus live in space? That's a really great question. Julian has an idea of what the answer might be and how scientists would study space viruses. I think viruses go dormant because how cold it is in space and that how scientists study them is they can collect all the uh, meteors in space and take samples. I mean, collecting all the meteors in space, that would take a long time. (laughs) It might be worth it. So let's ask our listeners, do you think a virus can live in space? And how do you think scientists would find out? Think about it, and we'll be back with a real-life alien virus hunter. Catherine Bywaters has heard Julian's question before. That is a question that some of the greatest minds here on Earth are asking. And she's one of those great minds. She's just not saying it. (laughs) It's good to be humble as well as great minded. (laughs) Catherine is building the tools that could one day search for viruses in space. My work revolves around looking for life primarily in our solar system. We've been searching for signs of life in our solar system for kind of a long time, but we've never looked for viruses before. But why do we want to look for viruses in space? Haven't they done enough on Earth? (laughs) Point taken. Here's Catherine's take. Viruses get a bad rap, but most of them don't affect humans. All right, but... It seems like viruses might deserve their bad reputation. (laughs) So there's got to be a good scientific reason to hunt for viruses in outer space, right? There's really two good reasons. The first actually has to do with life here on Earth. If we find viruses elsewhere, seeing what that virus is made of and understanding how that virus functions will aid us in understanding life here on Earth. Scientists know that viruses play a big part in the evolution of life, to this day. And just think how much they've affected our lives. Exactly. The second reason, and perhaps the best reason, is that viruses could be the first sign of life that we spot on other planets. So looking for viruses might be the best way to look for life, because they could be everywhere. Oh, like how? Well, it doesn't take too much to make a virus. They're just two parts. They're sort of the first building blocks, right? They're, they're so simple. They're just a little bit of information and a little bit of a capsule of some sort. So viruses are basically a message in a bottle. Yes. We're going to get into what they're really made of a little bit later. But like a message in a bottle, they're a sign of something bigger. Viruses need life to replicate. So if we find a virus, it's easy to imagine that we could find life. Wait, so she's saying viruses need life to reproduce. And if we find viruses, that means we could find life. So wait, are viruses life or are they something else? (laughs) Good catch. This is the trick question of viruses. There's a lot of debate as to whether a virus is alive. Viruses need a host in order to live. A host is a living organism, and the virus hijacks its cells and puts them to work for themselves. Until the virus has a host, it's dormant. Oh, so Julian mentioned viruses going dormant. He thought it was because of how cold it is in space. Yes, Julian nailed the idea that viruses can get by being not really alive, but it's not because they're too cold. 
They're dormant if they don't have a host. But that's a major advantage when it comes to space travel. Because they have sort of this dormant state, they could potentially last longer in a space environment. Living microbes fall apart quickly in space. They're fragile and delicate. But Catherine thinks viruses could survive some pretty big events. So if you did have, you know, viruses on one planet and an asteroid comes in and hits the planet and then throws all these viruses into space, they could potentially survive for a really long time. What? So viruses could survive an asteroid collision? Is there anything that kills them? Solar radiation, basically you just need to burn them up. So kill them with fire. But how do we know that? Well, we don't really. It's a theory based on what we know about viruses and what we know about space environments. These kinds of theories help scientists decide how to start their search for alien viruses. Okay, so what's the theory behind where alien viruses come from? A lot of the building blocks that make up viruses actually exist everywhere in space. Wait, what? Everywhere? Just floating around? Yes. So all the elements for life, including us humans, are originally created in space. Catherine says we can think of these elements as Legos. The different Legos that come together to build viruses are actually created in, you know, where stars are being formed. Sort of this space dust, right? It's kind of funny that we did an episode called Where Do Viruses Come From?, And we didn't talk about space dust at all. I've thought about that a lot. (laughs) This is kind of like zooming out on the episode, going way back in time to the Big Bang, and then thinking about viruses. I'm on board with that. There's, There's lots of ways to look at the same question. Definitely. So back in the stardust, viruses need two types of many, many Legos to come together through randomness and chaos. So there's two main parts to a virus. You have the the information that's sort of in the inside of the virus, and that's made up of your nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are DNA or RNA. Oh, so that's what the NA stands for, nucleic acids. Right. That's the chemical code or information that tells the virus what to do. The other part is a protein that protects this information. It's like an envelope that encapsulates the DNA or the RNA. So if the DNA or the RNA is the message, then the protein is the bottle that we were talking about before. Right, it's chemistry, but the virus also needs the right place or environment to put itself together. You really need to have sort of a planetary surface involved, at least our current understanding. Catherine imagines these virus Lego blocks settling down on a planet or a moon. Like a bottle washing up onto a shore, waiting for someone to open it. Or just like some alien life form to infect. Then an astrovirologist to come along and prove that it exists. (laughs) Yeah, so how would an astrovirologist go about looking for viruses on another planet? Like, could we get our rovers on Mars to do that? Unfortunately, Curiosity and Perseverance, the rovers working on Mars right now, don't have the right tools on board. It would be very difficult for them to detect viruses. Remember, life can be really, really small, right? You're thinking of bacteria that you can't see. And then viruses are even smaller than that. So we'd have to send a different set of virus hunting tools to space. Yes, and that's where Catherine comes in. She wants to build those tools. We're not talking about science fiction. We're talking about technology that can be built right now, that technology that can be used right now, and that we could get results from in my lifetime. Wow, so is Julian right after all? Are we just sampling meteors? Even better... We're going to Mars. So in 20 years, I would hope to have humans on the surface of Mars. What? Alien virus hunters on Mars? I know she said this isn't science fiction, but I would watch that movie. It would involve a lot of analyzing samples. (laughs) Maybe I wouldn't watch that movie. (laughs) 
So humans could actually go and scoop up samples in the best looking locations of Mars and bring it back to their spaceships and use tools to test. I got this cool looking dirt. Let's go back to the spaceship. Yay! (laughs) So if you think alien hunters on Mars are cool, you're going to love our next space virus destination. One of the most interesting places to look for life would actually be on moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Moons? Yes, scientists believe these moons have oceans beneath their frozen surfaces. That would be an excellent place for life and viruses to hide out, and NASA's excited to explore there. We're not going to be able to send people to these moons anytime soon, Uh, so robots are going to have to go and look for life for us. These robots would be able to pick up samples, process them, and send the information back to us on Earth. But it would be a 10-year flight from Earth to the outer solar system. Fortunately, they don't need pee breaks, and they probably don't just sit in the back asking the piloting system if they're there yet. (laughs) Still, it means that us on Earth have a lot of work to do. In 20 years, I want to see robots looking for life. I want to see people looking for life. And I want our entire solar system to just be explored by everybody. So, like, in 20 years, our listeners could be those alien virus hunters. Exactly. And if so, if you are an alien virus hunter in 20 years, send us a postcard. Or, you know, let us meet the robots. I've always wanted to meet a space robot, but how do you get to be an alien virus hunter? Catherine told me that the first step is to start thinking like a scientist. One of the best exercises is... Just keep asking yourself why. Be that kid that's always like, why, why, why? And you start honing down into the heart of what you're trying to get at. So keep asking why, keep asking questions. I think our listeners are more than able to do that. Definitely. What do you think the best way to find space viruses would be? Design your own tool to find them. Decide whether you want to design a tool for an astronaut to use on Mars or a robot to use on the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. What would they need to take samples? How would they find the viruses inside the samples? And how would they get their discoveries back to Earth? Draw a picture or even make those tools out of things you find around your house. Then send us a photo. We'd love to see it. Thanks to Dr. Katherine Bywaters, astrobiologist and program manager at Honey Bee Robotics. And special thanks to Julian for sending in his excellent question. To hear more about viruses in space, listen to our bonus interview episode with Catherine. It's available to patrons who pledge just $1 a month or more on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. We'll have free educational resources about astrovirology and astrobiology on our website, sciencepodcastforkids.com. You can also upload your drawings and photos to us there or email them to tumblepodcast at gmail.com. Claire Glendenning is our intern. Sarah Robertson Lentz designed the episode art and is our head of partnerships. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote and produced this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all of the music. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for more stories of science discovery. Discovery.